Tomas, a young film director, is finishing up the filming process, it is tough to be an extra on his set. One half-filled glass or weird, uncomfortable motion while coming down a staircase is enough to stop the entire process. As detail-oriented and sometimes mean as Tomas is, it is a wonder how he has managed to get to the end of his movie. There is a big party afterwards. Emotional and physical strains must be relieved, and even the boy operating a clap is eager to go home with a girl by his side. This is why he speaks to one of the guests, who isn't a part of the filming crew. Her name is Agathe, and she is in no position to be seduced by a blood-boiling boy. She goes over to the bar, and there, another guy attempts to speak with her, however, has no sexual intention in mind. He simply sees Agathe and notices that she could use a good cover. His name is Martin, and he is the last of the main characters. Soon, before he can talk to Agathe, Tomas comes up to him, and we learn that they are married. Tomas wants to celebrate his achievement, and he wants to dance with his husband, but the latter rejects him for now, explaining that he's extremely tired. Agathe overhears this, of course, and invites Tomas to dance with her. This simple, seemingly harmless event is where everything begins to fall apart. In the middle of the dancing, Martin comes up to Tomas from behind, telling him regretfully that he has to go and sleep. The young director is hurt and offended. The person he wants to express the most pride and happiness in this important moment of his career is showing no sign of cheerfulness. Annoyed, he listens to Agathe as she urges him to just keep on listening to music. A thought appears in his mind, and as the party keeps on raging, he changes gears and gradually gets closer and closer to her. Celebration continues in her apartment then, and as company has fun on the balcony, she and Tomas are left alone in her kitchen. We see Tomas making eye contact, and even though no words are spoken, it is clear that they are communicating in the language of tense, sexual silence. Slowly, they go over to her bedroom, and Tomas doesn't resist when she goes for a kiss. Breathing heavily, he remains passive even when she gets on top of him, and whether the thoughts of his husband pass through his mind in this moment, we don't know. In the next scene, however, as he cycles home, his expressions speak to the fact that he isn't really looking forward to seeing Martin. Pausing in front of his door, he reflects on himself for a moment and, changing character, walks inside. Martin doesn't even say hi as Tomas passes him by. He's mad that his husband didn't call him last night to let him know that he was staying there. Tomas apologizes for this and, coming up to him, tells him the whole truth. He wants to share what he felt too, but as much as he wants to listen, Martin fails to stay calm while listening to Tomas's honesty. In an urge to get away from this conversation, he walks away at a high pace as his husband follows his tail, trying to flicker a conversation about how their relationship has been undergoing an unpleasant change lately. Martin takes out his suitcase then, and for a moment, the two grapple lightly until Martel yields for the time being, reaches for his bag, and goes to his physical training class. Before he walks out of the door, however, he turns to Tomas and suggests to him warmly that he take a nap and relax. They are going to be fine. It seems that problems often arise in their relationship, especially after Tomas finishes working on his films. That day, Agathe is followed by a man we haven't seen before. He seems to be her ex-boyfriend, with whom things weren't competitive last night. He wanted to speak with Agathe at the party, but she avoided having contact with him. Now, she breaks up with him at last, assuring him that reviving their relationship is impossible, and she returns the keys to his home. Her friend, who used to intern for Tomas, invites her into his office then. This is their last day here, and to say goodbye, they wish to take a picture with the director. When all of them, including Agathe, walk out of the door, Tomas is left alone, reflecting on how he felt while being with that woman last night. Desireful to feel it again, he soon finds himself running after her. They have sex in his office. Whether it is a genuine feeling or a wish to get back at his husband, we don't know yet but the infidelity continues. Tomas and Martin drive over to their summer house and successfully avoid talking about his affair. That night, however, Tomas fails to fall asleep, and it is very early the next morning that he wakes him up to have a conversation about it. Just like before, he shares everything openly, with the addition that now he expresses his wish that Martin feels happy for him. This is a time for excitement in his life. He's beginning to experience things he has never experienced before, and he wants Martin to cheer him on this path. The latter responds that he's okay with him doing whatever he wants to do, but sensing that something is off, he doesn't feel happy for him. 
Tomas's statement that love is slowly fading away from their relationship, and his suggestion that they should take more risks to avoid getting distant, don't work for him at all either. Tomas seems to be egotistically prioritizing his own interests here. Later that night, Martin meets with his close friend Clement. The latter introduces him to an upcoming, passionate writer named Aimed who has just finished his novel. The celebration is tonight. He is intrigued by Aimed. After finishing up work, Tomas joins them too. He settles in with them and gets a little too interested in Aimed's work, giving him assertive questions and trying to dominate him in conversation. He talks down both Clement and Aimed in the next scene, and before they can have a full disagreement about it, he says that he is heading over to his editing room to continue working. Martin knows he is lying, and he says so, but Tomas admits nothing. Shortly after, he is soaking in Agate's bathtub, calling her to come stand in front of him so that he can simply look at her. This is all he wants to do. The next morning, they listen to a sweet song and watch one another in silence, Gazing over at each other, passion and sexual attraction aren't the only things they feel. An enormous specter of joyful emotions is reflected in their eyes, until Agathe is reminded of a song her father taught her. She sings it to him, and she covers her face afterwards as Tomas's stare makes her shy. From his side, signs of falling in love are beginning to show. He admits his love to her shortly after, and Agathe chooses not to respond with whatever Tomas is expecting to hear from her. If you ask Agathe, Tomas must be saying this to a lot of people. He expresses love in large chunks, only when it works for him. Tomas denies this accusation, of course. He says the words, I love you, only when he feels them. He's in Martin's apartment in the next scene, packing his stuff. They are being separated, and the fact that Martin is reading Aim's book and likes it stirs him up a little bit. Martin is also considering selling their summer house, since he has no desire to share a loan with Tomas. Boxes full of books are then taken over to Agate's apartment. He is moving in with her, and he is welcomed with warmth. Later that evening, he calls Martin to discuss the matter of selling the house. It seems like such a dramatic decision, and he wants to review all the other possibilities first. Besides, he wishes to just speak with him. But as we soon see, Martin is in bed with Aimed when Tomas calls, so he has no intention to talk to him at length. He is urged not to pick up the phone another time if he doesn't want to engage in a conversation with a manipulative person such as Tomas, and Martin is eager to follow this advice. Tomas is anything but happy with how things are settling themselves. Thinking about Martin, he fails to pay attention to Agathe. This is why Martin is left wondering whether he knows him at all. A beautiful woman who's committed to him stands in front of him, but still, he finds himself drawn inside his own shell of unhappiness. That night, he turns to her in bed, and even though a moment of passion explodes between them, they find that gravity is slowly fading away. The next morning, we follow Agate to her work and see that she's a teacher. The school kids seem to love her a lot. Meanwhile, Tomas goes over to Martin's place to pick up the rest of his boxes. Thinking that his ex-husband is taking a shower, he walks inside the bathroom to let him know that he's here, but very soon, we see him rushing out of the door, apologizing. It seems that it was Aim taking a shower. Tramping heavily, Tomas leaves the place, feeling anger and bitterness as they grow inside of him. Later that evening, to determine what it is that Martin sees in him, he begins reading Aim's book. Agatha cooks for him, but he doesn't eat a thing. To add to his annoyance, Agatha notices what he's reading and expresses how much she likes that novel. She even emphasizes how interesting the writer seemed to her when she met him last year. Hearing Agathe praise this man's work skyrockets his fury. From this moment until the end of the dinner, all his energy has to go into hiding this irresistible emotion. The next morning, he visits Martin at work. The latter seems to be a designer of posters, and he's discussing something with very important clients when his ex-husband arrives. Tomas tries to use the matter of selling their house to justify his visit, but Marty's is in no mood to play games. He demands the keys to his apartment, and once he's assured that Tomas doesn't have them here, he says that he has to get back to work. All attempts from Tomas's side to continue communication turn out unsuccessfully. Dinner with friends should be at least a little bit liberating for Tomas, but he finds himself struggling to pay attention in the next scene. When Agathe engages in a lengthy monologue about her childhood and the intricacies of her early years, followed up by her connection to cinema during that time. Martin enters the bar with his co-worker and sits on a table around a corner. 
all his friends, including Agathe, notice his entrance, and the amount of distress roaming across Tomas's expression is also obvious to them, so they urge him to walk up to Martin and say hi. They stress that even divorced couples can become close friends, but Tomas fails to find enough courage to follow their advice. Tomas returns the keys to his apartment the next morning. Greeting him with a cheerful hello and a smile on his face, he receives nothing but a cold welcome. But still, he walks inside the place, looking around brightly. He takes off his robe, revealing a quite provocative outfit, and goes over to the kitchen to pour a glass of wine for himself. Martin seems to be discussing the matter of selling the house on the phone. When he's done talking, he informs Tomas that a couple is coming to take a look at the place soon, and he wants to repaint the frames of the windows before they do. Tomas doesn't want to sell the house. Without his consent, Martin won't be able to fulfill his wish, but he can do the frame painting. He is going over there very early tomorrow, and Tomas expresses a will to follow him. Naturally, Martin has his objections, but he realizes soon that he can't tell Tomas what to do, especially when it comes to the house that they both own. And since he's leaving very early, Tomas takes the liberty to sleep there tonight. When both go to bed, he walks up to him in his underwear, and no words are spoken as they revive some of their relationship. The next morning, Tomas wakes up in his bed and breaks some extremely surprising news to Martin. It's troubling how he chooses to say this only after the two have already slept together, but he informs him, however, that Agathe is pregnant. In a short and bitter conversation, he expresses that both he and her want to raise this baby. To add to his own inconsiderableness, he even asks Martin whether he wants to have a kid or not. This is all ridiculous for the latter. He has no intention to continue with the conversation. Tomas goes back over to Agathe's apartment then. A dinner with her parents is planned, and since he hasn't helped her in any way to prepare for it, Agathe is furious with him. He walks inside wearing the same outfit as yesterday, and greets her mother Edith and her father. During the ordinary interrogation conducted over the dinner table in the following scene, he openly shares with them his German origins. He even says that he might decide to move back to Germany one day. The father doesn't understand much English, so when Edith translates Tomas's words in French, the man harshly reminds him that he is about to become a father. Responding to this, to lighten the situation, Tomas assures both that he isn't going anywhere. But the parents also worry about his orientation, thinking that he will leave their daughter on a whim. This is why Edith continues to press down on him, asking him uncomfortable questions, until Tomas feels insulted and storms away. For a moment, Edith justifies her questions in front of Agathe, explaining to her anxiously that she just wants to make sure that her grandchildren will have a good father. It wasn't her intention to humiliate her, and this is what she stresses over and over again when finally, Tomas comes back to the table. The mother only wants to be assured of his trustworthiness, but clearly, she is in the wrong here. However, the dinner isn't terminated. It continues in awkward silence. In the middle of the night, Tomas turns up at Martin's apartment in the next scene, and after trying to show love and explosive affection, he forces himself inside. Martin doesn't allow him to feel welcome. He shows no sign of good intention as Tomas restlessly continues to seek warmth. Finally, he manages to make him sit down and offers to raise this child together. They can be a family. With widely open eyes, he expresses his confusion, and once tears come rolling out of his eyes, Martin embraces him, and words of love start shooting from his mouth. Clearly, Martin is confused too. Aimed notices this the next morning, and he decides to get to the bottom of it. Martin breaks it to him then, he doesn't love him, and it will be better if they don't see each other anymore. Here, Aimed makes the most rational point that has been made throughout this entire story up to this point. He assures Martin that his decision to get back with Tomas will lead to destruction. They are too blind to see this now, but none of them will survive it. There is a lovely party in their summer house in the following scene. Agathe comes too. She meets with Martin and the rest of their friend group. After eating and conversing continuously about simple and cheerful ordinary things, Clement sings and plays piano for them. His delightful voice makes everyone gravitate towards their inner bluest colors. That night, before going to bed, Agathe hears noises coming from another room. Martin and Tomas are clearly having a lot of fun together. Cheerful noises become sexual, and soon Agathe finds herself crouched on the bed, reflecting on her choices. It hurts her greatly to hear the noises coming from Martin's bedroom. After a few hours, Tomas slips inside her bed, 
and as she pretends to be asleep, her eyes begin to tear up. Tomas's car is overflowing with heavy silence as they drive home the next morning. Before leaving, Agathe makes sure he understands that his actions have consequences and walks away coldly, saying that she will call him in a few days. As she approaches the school building, we hear a loud, muffled screaming coming from Tomas's vehicle. He can't be happy with himself. Agathe is feeling even worse. After passing out for several hours from exhaustion, her mother takes care of her. Edith also emphasizes that she should have severed contact with a person like Tomas. But these kinds of judgmental conversations cannot be productive for Agathe right now. All she needs is some kindness. Clearly, Edith cannot provide any of that for now, so she prefers to leave her daughter alone with her thoughts. Time passes, and she follows her mother's advice to cut all ties to Tomas. Meanwhile, the bond between the ex-partners strengthens until Martin decides to speak with Agath privately. In the next scene, they are at a cafe. Martin understands that she doesn't want to discuss anything that concerns Tomas, so he just lets her know that they are going to Venice tonight, and gives her a present. Agath is pleasantly surprised by this sudden gift. She opens it up, smiling brightly at Martin's thoughtfulness, but once she sees that it is a soft cloth for her baby, her expression changes. Clearly, Martin doesn't know what her decision was regarding the baby. She had an abortion, and as it seems, Tomas hadn't considered it necessary to inform Martin about it. The latter is taken aback. Feeling embarrassed, he changes the subject and asks how she is. Still, Agathe explains the reason behind her decision. She wanted to start a family, but after realizing that she would disappear between Martin and Tomas, she chose to tread a different path. Martin sobers up here. Perhaps he wanted this to work out. Or perhaps he feels responsible and guilty for Agathe's troubles. Their conversation doesn't go on for long. They say a warm goodbye and try to go on with their lives, knowing they will never see each other again. A few hours later, Tomas is dressing up cheerfully. Excited at the prospect of leaving France, he goes over to see what Martin is doing, and finds it to his surprise that the latter is simply making dinner, as if they weren't going to the airport this evening. He's clearly decided not to go. Coldly, he lets him know this and goes on with his business. Tomas is confused, and once he said that their relationship is over for good, he walks up to Martin slowly, thinking that it's about aimed. Martin might actually be going back to him, but he doesn't know yet. In any case, he is kind and thoughtful. He is nothing like Tomas. Still, however, this isn't the main reason why he has decided to walk away from this forever. He saw Agathe today, and after having a conversation with her, he's now assured that he will always be miserable with Tomas. The only thing he wants from him now is a promise that when he gets back, he won't try to get back together with him. Holding the emotions that are raging inside his heart in this moment, he emphasizes that he wants his life back, and doesn't care about it at all if this makes Tomas even the slightest bit unhappy. Restlessly, Tomas paces around the living room anxiously for a while and, without saying anything back, cycles to Agathe's school in distress. It is when she's in the middle of her lesson that he rushes inside the class and stands upright in front of her, inviting her passionately to come with him to Italy. Continuing to be romantic and following a tide of irresistible, craving emotion tickling inside his heart, he adds that she is the person he wants to spend his entire life with. Embarrassed, Agathe gives the class a simple task, and invites Tomas to speak outside for five minutes. Craving another chance, Tomas begs her for forgiveness in tears, but all Agathe can see is an ugly, childlike face seeking to fill up his daily dose of affection. Once love is given to him, this face will quickly change, and the awful circle of self-destructive relationship patterns will continue. This is why, despite him embracing her knees in desperation, Agathe walks away and goes back into her class in silence as Tomas continues to weep on the floor. After a few seconds, he hears the voice of a woman telling him to get up and go, and he bitterly does as he is bid. Finally, he has hit rock bottom, and to clear his mind, he cycles his troubles away.